Welcome to Cartoonist Kayfabe. My name is Ed Piscor. I'm Jim Rugg. And I'm Tom Scholey, author of Jack Kirby, The Epic Life of the King of Comics and Fantastic Four Grand Design. And why do something once if you could do it twice? <laughs> and we're going to be taking a look at uh, Fantastic Four issue number one in two kind of coffee table treatments. One uh, was spearheaded by Walter Mosley. The other by the guy who kind of invented this kind of idea, man, uh, Chip Kid. But first... I uh, want to invite you guys to like, follow, and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Hit the bell icon so that we can notify you when new videos are available. And that helps mitigate the kayfabe effect, which is what happens when we put a video out there. Uh, the the stuff that we're talking about becomes pretty sought after by the 61,000 in attendance. And something like this Fantastic Four book that probably didn't get very many reprints, you're not going to be able to find that on eBay or Amazon uh, after you know the first day that we put this video out there so the subscribers get first dibs on this stuff. Also, if you watch these videos to the very end, that helps uh, push our YouTube content out to other comic book loving YouTube watchers who haven't yet seen our uh, material. And we're growing this channel in leaps and bounds. We've got more than 61,000 subscribers, but uh, we do have a goal of about 6 million subscribers that we need to hit before uh, the wheels come off, man. So we're only playing with, uh, what, 1% of our audience at this stage? Uh, guys, 2005, Maximum FF. This was kind of the talk uh -huh. uh, between cartoonists for a little while there. The idea of doing these like, big blown up scans of uh, Fantastic Four number one. It's a really cool project. You know, as you say, Ed, that's the exact description. It's yeah. just interesting that somebody came up with it. In this case, Walter Mosley. And I dug it. I was excited whenever I heard about this. You know, it was like, I want one. Cool idea, but... The bitching and complaining that we all made was all the same thing because this really highlights the boilerplate shit coloring job yeah. whenever they abuse their reprint material and don't give a fuck and just slap on these colors. Uh, garish, ugly, the scans uh, leave some things to be desired a bit. And I like to think, and, and it's like, what is all this white? This is a really good designer that puts that part together, and I actually like that part. Um, and we're going to see the contrast of another really good designer uh, when Ship Kid comes back and does it. Uh, it's a weird design problem, though. Yeah. How are you going to pull out these panels that are like a tall vertical panel? What do you do with that other space? In this case, it was just isolating it. I would equate it to seeing uh, pop art. You see a panel blown up and put on a wall. Yeah. In a weird way, that's kind of what I would compare this treatment to. This is an art object. It's ostensibly you've read this comic a million times so this is like another kind of distribution mechanism to get it out to you so there's stuff cut off there's uh cropped things like in the middle of the spy uh my thoughts are let's just like go through this thing really really quickly yeah. uh anything interesting comes out i think that there's some <laughs> yeah that's that's smart design let's get our guy stretchy yes. genius i like it it's amazing to see those panels at that scale like that's blown up I don't know, 50 times or something. Right. You know, a lot of my issues with this book are erased just by the fact that the Chip Kid one exists. Like, this mm -hmm. stuff doesn't bother me as much now looking at it because it's like, you know, it, it's been done, you know, the way I want it, the what, other way. What an embarrassment of riches too, where you get two versions. Yeah, yeah, I, right. I, I like to think, I have no idea, I think that there's some back matter in, in the Chip Kid one that explains the idea or whatnot. Well, yeah. But he, I like to think that he saw this and said, oh, no, 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 no. I know what to do. Well, I have he, the way. He, he wasn't states, the only one that, states, that said that. In, in, he states something similar to that. Either it's in this book itself or, or maybe I, I saw it elsewhere. But he said that it was brought to him as right. like, we want to do this thing again, but do it, you know, with like the actual you That's know, scans, the thing. I think know? everybody's reaction to this was, what is this coloring? Why did yeah. they go this way? And so like there was that opportunity to shoot the original book. Right. It's yeah. it's it's uh, in the last 20 years, I think there's been a reappraisal of the value of those original comics and what they look like. Yeah. And so that's what you're getting with the chip kid version. Um, but man, I'll be honest. I, I like both versions. But the part about like use the original coloring. I think that was everybody that that was a pretty wide reaction to that first version. Ed, can I say one more thing? Like you mentioned the garish colors. Yeah. But also 
the black line. Yeah, yeah, to yeah. Me yeah is for so sure. Because it's so uniform. Yeah. And we've never seen a uniform black line. The original isn't uniform. The original right. has like grays and stuff. And then the printed version has all kinds of blotches. and so It just looks so weird to me. Yeah. Yeah. There's a dissonance for sure. I remember when we were first playing around with this kind of thing, you called the black of this old thing. You called it skin cancer black. Yeah. It's, they're, <laughs> yeah. Jim Rugg, always the diplomat, man. Yeah. I'm going to go with the Chip Kid version. They Personally. did a great job on this one, and uh, Chip Kid has notes in here that kind of talk about where he's coming from, and you'll see a very different approach. We're not isolating the panels now. You're getting little bits of, like, what's around that panel that's the focal point, and he mentions that, you know, like, if he was going to do this, it wasn't just photograph the original comic as a source, but also, like, how do you present it, how do you design it, and lay this stuff out. So some variation there. Um, should say Jeff Spear, the photographer who has worked with Chip Kidd on like all these books that we pull out and look at and yeah. say, you know, this looks great. An unsung hero, I'd say, you know. Right, but 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 a guy worthy, you know, a true collaborator on these things. Um, the glossy paper I don't know about. Sometimes yeah. I see like it'll catch a little bit. Hey, you know what happened here? What go, happened here? Go, uh, go back a panel or two. All right, so I want to call this attention. Slide that over so we can see both of these. Yeah. Now, turn your page. What's the next panel that you see? Ah. Uh. Chip Kid skips a panel. Mm -hmm. It's very odd. I, I don't know why he does that, but uh, skips, skips a panel because, like, here we are back to this panel, but completely skips one of the panels of the police chasing after the thing. So Interesting. Choice or mistake? I, I don't say. know. It's, it's, uh, it's odd. I don't know why you would do it, considering what this project is. Yeah. But also... A lot of eyeballs on this, so I, it feels like a strange mistake to make. Look at that. It's so good. Yeah. Really now, cool. I mean, maybe, maybe you should, you should uh, try, I'll keep try following to keep along up. in okay. some of the big panels. I love this because it shows that depth, Yeah. Um, which would be an easy one to lose. And you can see almost the same kind just, of, just like you know, kind of the same treatment almost for these two spreads, just a little bit more of a zoom. Very powerful. Like, this is, this is the stuff Chip Kid would get criticized for sometimes for cropping in too close right. on a panel where he's almost like recomposing it. Right. But I mean, it sings in these pages. That's what you're buying this for. Yeah. Now, like, have you guys read this as a comic? Like, have you read this? Like this book? This book. No. Yeah. Because I did. To me, it's the definitive superior way of consuming this story. It's amazing. It's incredible. It it's like widescreen. It hits you in the gut and in the face. The Fantastic Four number one, read it a million times, referenced it a million times, making Fantastic Four grand design, and it's come alive. It's like it's like I'm reading it for the first time, and it's 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 better than I've ever experienced it before. Um, I want to note that Chip Kid is including ads, yeah. which I love. You mm -hmm. know, that's something that I did with Hulk Grand Design. Yeah. Um, but part of that is to get like spreads and stuff to work. So right. the ads are somewhat arbitrary, but a really kind of a cool design element that adds to the ephemera. But Tom, back to the definitive reading part. Yeah. All credit to me goes to Walter Mosley on that because it's sure. such an interesting idea of like, let's take this book and go panel by panel, page by page, like as a concept. I love it. Yeah. And I mean, it didn't happen before this. Right. So, you know, like it almost comes out of left field as being a brilliant, great idea, but like, how's that idea come to you, Walter? Well, yeah. this is this is how culture works. Yes. And there's like innovators and pioneers and bleeding edge and the guy who gets the arrow in the back. And then there's like refinement as things go on and, and all these, you know, like this this is where it brought us, you know. And everybody along the way deserves their, you know, piece of the pie. See, now the Marvel version gets gets the props for this piece, uh, man, yes. because that was the the spread that we had. I guess also, like Chip Kid, it would not be of any interest it's to him so to just cool. completely that, re that's, that kind of a like a zoom. You know, I mean, it's really yeah. powerful to see well, it, it that. Yeah, size. this this becomes like a more cinematic experience because you're seeing this like you know, pan. And maybe, you know, when you're seven years old and reading Fantastic Four number one and, and you're holding it close to your face and stuff, it's like that. But we don't read comics like that anymore. So you have to make these kind of adjustments. I love this aesthetic. Like, yeah. I, I just 100% endorse it. Well, we're, it. we're kind of part of this aesthetic. Like, and, and, you know, for good or bad, like, we, we you know, this is akin to the kind of work this we make. This is pop art. Yeah. yeah. You know, I mean, that, that well, is something you could put on the wall. When you call, like, that th this original version pop art it's like pop in a sense but to me like an ingredient of pop art is kind of like the dots and totally, things yes. and it's completely absent you know right. and i i could i mean this is abrams comic arts uh new york publisher like i i totally can imagine this on somebody's like coffee table who doesn't read comics in any way all right i 
I think you just need both versions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you need to be able to go back and forth, you know, like, like they, they, yeah. they yin and yang, like, which one I prefer. Yeah. I um, mean, I mean, I enjoy the reading experience of comics, you know, that's why I'm in it, and, like, the, like I want to read this. The other one, not, not really, not really. I do love how it bleeds, and you get those edges of, yeah. like, the other panels and stuff, and then when you get an open panel like this... It's almost creepy. I mean, it's a bold choice to leave all that extra stuff because there's a million ways you could sort of deal with it, but to leave it is a bold choice, and I think it. I think it works. I think and, it will. And he's cropping. He's yeah. doing these interesting crops. I think it will leave some good... people out. I think there are some people who will be unable to read this because that will just bother them too yeah. much. There's your flat back black yeah. uh, that you're talking about, Tom. But it's a it's a pretty good contrast color from there to this piece to kind of like really see what you're getting with the texture of the paper and the uneven inks. Yeah, I mean, it's just like that. Wow, I so, love this spread. When I look at an old comic, I see the universe in here. I see the universe in the pulp of the paper. I I see the universe in the uneven application of black, in the dots, in the way the dots lay. I could stare at this forever. This is a, a, a great experience. And that's I don't see that in this other stuff at all. I would love to hear the uh, the original designer. I think Paul... Paul sir or sorry and uh also like walter mosley i'd love to hear his thoughts on this because he writes a really great essay in this version and it kind of talks about tom what you're describing is like this is a definitive reading experience and he says like whenever he tracked these comics down as an adult the reading experience was different mm -hmm. and that's what drove him to the concept of like the one panel per page when he yeah. was he said he would scan it and print the panels out as big as he could on his printer and that restored that reading experience for him, that awe, uh -huh. like that. Like, man, you see that as a little tiny panel in the book. It, you're watching and you a lose movie. Now. It all. Yeah. Here it's magnificent. Now, um, also, think about the technology involved. Think about what a really state of the art computer could do back then. Your, a, an image with all this stuff in it going through would, would make your computer break. Like, right. it just wasn't possible <laughs> back then to do this. <laughs> That's really fun, too, whenever you come yeah. in and you get to see, like, the big lettering show up. Yeah, I feel um, like you sacrifice a lot, though, don't you? This is almost the same piece. You know, this is one of the more similar crops. The difference is you don't get the type, like, the lead-in, the Fantastic yeah. Four meat. I mean, I got to give it to that, you know, the Fantastic... <laughs> Chip Kid's lucky in a way, because if this had been the crop on, on the Mosley edition... Then what? He has to cut it out. He has to figure out a different way to crop it. And it's so perfect with the Fantastic Four language on it. I understand the Mosley treatment with it because they wanted to get you more Kirby. They wanted to give you a little more yeah. Kirby and a little less Artie Simek. Cartoonist Kayfabe is brought to you by the comics that Ed Piscor and I make. If you want to support Cartoonist Kayfabe, pick up our comic books. Hulk Grand Design Monster and Hulk Grand Design Madness is my latest comic. It's in comic shops everywhere right now. A retelling of the 60-year history of The Incredible Hulk featuring me as writer, artist, colorist, letterer. This is my version of the Hulk paying homage to some of the great cartoonists that have come before me. Pick this up wherever you buy comics. Red Room Trigger Warnings, now available in comic shops everywhere. Banned in 23 countries and 11 comic shops but even those comic shops that ban it can pick it up for you, you can pre-order, or may be able to pull it out from underneath the counter. Murder on the Dark Web for fun and profit. This is the second season, but every issue is self-contained, so whichever one you come across, pick it up. It's the perfect, complete story in each issue. And the Antisocial Network is the collection of the first season of Red Room, again, available wherever you pick up your comics. Jimmy, can we look at that backdrop before we get out of here? All right, we're done paying the bills, man. Uh, let's get back to the video. Looking for a new way to enjoy your favorite comics and manga? Comixology Unlimited has you covered. With Comixology Unlimited, you get unlimited access to an unrivaled library of over 40,000 digital comics, manga, and graphic novels featuring content from over 125 publishers and thousands of independent creators from around the world. And if that's not enough, you can also save up to 15% when buying select new and current comics. Try Comixology Unlimited today with a free 30-day trial and then just $5.99 a month afterwards. For details, visit Amazon.com slash Comixology Unlimited or click the link below this video. What are they, pinups? <laughs> it's so good. I love that line. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and it's so Shakespeare. There is some, uh, you know, play between the, the ads and this thing. He's looking at this, like, little picture postcard, and then you have this thing of, like, your Christmas cards or whatever. Tom, you have both? I don't. I, I, I don't want the other one. You know, the, and what is the other one to the, the people who are listening? Oh, the Mosley, the uh, the Maximum FF. I don't want, I had not you know, you Bill, Bill Boychell tried selling me hard on this when it came out, <laughs> and I just didn't want it. You know, but this 
is like one of my favorite things ever. I want this for like every comic. They're doing a Spider-Man one with like the first two Spider-Man stories. That's so good, man. Because yeah. you, you're going to get that Spider-Man face with the little polka dot yeah, eyes. That's going to be really I'll, good. I'll rebuy my whole comics collection in this format, you know? I'm off by a couple pages, but this is one of those like two-page spreads that I think really works. Yeah, and how do we do that? And, and even the, uh, the, the, the lousy... Yeah, where is that? Oh, there, there you go. You know, even the lousy printing... Um, on this one, I think actually fits pretty well with just blue, red, yellow, and black. Even like, with the, like it's all right. Even with the off registration, it feels like a silk screen. Man, you know what? That's another one where I, on this edition we get the soldier screaming help. And yeah. It's cropped out of this edition, the, Mo the Mosley edition. I like. I'm I'm getting flashbacks because I had to like relive this stuff in extreme close up, doing like the Fantastic Four Grandest. Like this issue is probably the one. I referenced the most in it. So it is like... I'm surprised that we didn't get like a two-page spread of these <laughs> <Yeah>. eyeballs. <laughs> Those eyeballs are great. Good end papers. That's something I associate maybe more with Ditko than, than Kirby. Yeah, I mean, they both true. do it, but... The Invisible Girl looks so good in the uh, Chip Kid... You know, like all those printings where you see the paper texture and yeah. stuff underneath that white. It's, really it's indispensable. Good. That's amazing. Great silhouettes. There have been a few of so those like, quiet moment When they're climbing up the mountain, it's a really good Let's silhouette. Let's show that version. Yeah, and, I mean, Kirby was drawing at a different scale back then, too. So it's like a lot of this stuff, your, your eye just doesn't have a chance to appreciate. I'm, That's a good point. Because it was it was drawn two up. Yeah. So, so you are able to get a little bit more detail in something that would be like a small piece on the printed page. That difference, it shows up. Like Kirby, against his own interests, put more detail in this than he probably needed to and it's only now that like the world gets to appreciate it i'm stunned by almost every spread yeah just as a spread that's magnificent you know part of man i kind of like want to make a comic 11 by 17 and then fuck with it i i do too because yeah. to me this is just gorgeous yeah you know, and I, I don't care if you read this in the amount of time it takes you to read a comic book or what, like that doesn't that's not it's, a concern. It's a, it's a slower read too, because because you you just kind of zip through a comic when you're reading it. You're conditioned to read a comic a certain way. When you read this, it's a longer read. That's a really good ad to go yeah. with, like no, you know, like yeah. a weird science thing it's, that's going. There's on. There's a real good one coming it, up. It's <laughs> almost like a, a Kirby collage. It is, <laughs> right? It is, yeah. yeah. That's a good spread. All those spreads, you're right. It's so mm -hmm. cinematic, Tom. And then this is my favorite. Uh, that's genius. Side by side one. Genius. That's phenomenal. Genius. What a what a page. Now, you know, I recently bought like a projector, and so like I just hook my you know TV stuff through there, and it's like I'm watching movies that I've never seen on the big screen, you know, like Tron or something, and it's like it's a whole other experience. Things you've watched a million, you're seeing little stuff in the corners in the background, and so, so like like what doesn't benefit from a closer examination, you know? And this is the equivalent to that. Yeah, it's, it's the way to see this stuff after decades to get to see it new. You know, it's it's kind of, <laughs> it's it could be cynical too, because it's like, okay, now Marvel is going to resell every comic they ever sold. This is rad, Ed. We've been playing with like borders in a lot of our, of our pages. I've never seen a border treatment like that, where it goes from the standard straight edge uh -huh. to a different border on yeah. the same panel. That's pretty cool. They're inventing language a little bit, man. I always thought of this as like a Ghastly Grim Ingalls kind of yeah, image. It's a good image. I can't believe the detail of these, like... Uh, Sharp as a needle, man. Yeah, and there's a, they're, they're so tight. It's that Frank Miller thing, man. Like, you need to learn how to ink with a brush <laughs> and a ruler. Aw, oh, dude. And look at how the drawing of Mole Man comes alive, oh, too. Oh, totally. You know? Totally. I can't wait. We Make sure you get to that stick fighting sequence, because I want to see how both guys handle that. To me, that's a famous... Yeah, I love that. Yeah. Okay. I, I copied it verbatim in Grand Design. Yeah, uh, I've seen uh, John, John Byrne copy it. Okay, in, yeah. Uh... So great. Yeah, I mean, this is another one where I, I have to... I have to give the Chip Kid one. I mean, you know, these are so such well, it's, just slightly bigger, but it has such an impact. You, yeah. you stand on the shoulders of giants. It's kind of unfair to compare the two. It is true. You it know? is true. Like, give this guy another crack at it and see what he comes up with, with a better computer and, and with the <laughs> knowledge of, you know, 20 more years. I wonder how um, how he got the files, Paul, Paul Sauer. 
Because like the days, did Marvel send him like high res? Yeah, because like, I can't imagine. I can't imagine the Marvel ones being this high res that you could like zoom in this much and not have like pixelation. Yeah, I think he just. I think he just blew them up because there was like the Marvel, like the facsimile edition with the silver yeah. border, same color and stuff like that. You can blow it up and then you can you could anti alias yeah. or like hit the threshold because mm-hmm. I think that's what we're seeing here, and that's how you get the the weird like lens flares every now and then. Because the color is a separate channel. Like, you could mm-hmm. take... Whenever I recolor that stuff, you could just take their color channel off. Yeah, if, if any of these guys want to come on so the show. Good, that's a good crop right here, though, on the Mosley. Yeah. I'll show that off for that reason. Yeah. Well, that's a nice two-pager, yeah. yeah. Man, that, that reminds me of, like, Eric Cave and some of his totally. weird superhero stuff. That's cool. You have a lot more flexibility with this older version because of the white. The, you know, you don't have... You know, you can do whatever you want. I do think the white creates, like, you get to play with negative space in a way that maybe Chip Kid's version doesn't mm-hmm. have. I, pr- I prefer the chip, yeah, though. Like, yeah. like, like, fill every inch. Like, it, f- it feels wonky to yeah. me. Chip, Chip Kid's one, like, it's down and dirty, and you're in it. You're in, you know, it's so fitting for Marvel, you know? This this would be good for, like, a DC comic. Like, this, this other version. <laughs> do that with, like, a, a Kurt Swan Superman story or something. That's funny. good spread here see if, i mean mm-hmm. this is a great comparison like you got the full page treatment and then you got this like indicia it does feel like the, to me this is like your museum art book uh-huh mm-hmm. it's so funny because it's like what yeah they're almost the same yeah it's, it's but, how, but how did, right, was the, he the, able the, to the shape, blow yeah. it up all the way and really not crop anything uh, unless there's like the, a little bit of squeezing going on maybe that's you like know what these are not the same size books so this is a taller, skinnier book. Um, you can see there's like an inch, yeah, an extra that's, inch that's sticking out at the bottom, but mm-hmm. the width is the same. And then the other piece is there's margin on the sides right. and for, for, yeah, this for this one, yeah. particular he, he spread all the way that in. you're not getting in, uh, in the Chip Kid treatment. I love these panels that show off like the landscapes and the gnarly rocks and stuff. I think that really benefits from having the texture yeah. included. Also also having the, the benefits of, of the, the spread also makes me think of like... Uh, Frank Miller's 300 when there would be these like long landscapes and and panoramas and this is cool this is a cool like I think this is the first time we've seen this yeah right in the book yeah I was gonna say so there's your it's one panel and uh the chip kit is breaking it up into two pages now tell me a little bit about this back matter so the back matter is fantastic there there's several of these essays chip kid talks about how this project comes together because you know, this book already exists. So when somebody shows up and says, hey, do you want to do this? It's like, didn't we already see that? And so he talks about somebody had Fantastic Four number one that he could sick Jeff Spears on with his camera, um, something that they've done a lot of. So that was one part. The other part was he wanted it to look different in the layouts. And that's where you're getting like the choice to include some of the, there's not white space, you know, if you're zooming in, but the crop means you see the other panels, that's fine. And also having the ads, that ephemera to, give him some freedom as a layout artist. You know, if I need a two page spread and I need to make fill one page, put some ad info in there. So you get some of that info. And then this page by page back matter is Tom Brevert talking about some of these pages and speculating on possibly pages that were put together out of order. Um, things that were paste ups, like on page one, the fantastic four circles above the, uh, the, the splash page. Um, so there's some speculation on that, even where the origin is like, was this planned as like, I forget the page count, but as a different page count and then things were added. So you get some of that behind the scenes stuff and him speculating, right? One of the guys that's just hyper knowledgeable about Marvel history, pointing out some of that, speculating on the inker. The inker is not known right. um, for this issue. That's so funny. I always thought it was just Dick Ayers. Mm-mm. Yeah. No, I, I, the one I used to hear was Chris Rule, but I think they, they eliminated him as a possibility. Him and I think somebody named Klein, maybe. George and those Klein. two often work together, and I might have that name off, but they often work together in the same studio, so chances are maybe the two of them were passing yeah. pages back and forth. Um, but it's a mystery to this day I, as to okay. who actually I, was, it. I feel like they very recently resolved it. So maybe oh, like okay. as maybe of the printing have, of yeah. this, they hadn't. But this this I love. Yeah. This is a photo stat of the original, original cover. art. And it's really cool. They talk about, again, I think this is all Tom Brevert, but about how like a lot of the reprints, you'll see different uh, 
title blurbs and cover blurbs because they were constantly like messing with this and manipulating it. Um, that was a big thing that Stanley and I think Martin Goodman would would get their hands in. Mm-hmm. So cool, man! Like each individual letter is pasted up here with some of these words. I don't know if these are together. I have to put my head in the thing, but like yeah. together is is it's all individual letters. Yeah, up next to one another. The line art though. here being so crisp reminds me a lot of Mike Allred. Mm-hmm. Sure. It's it's a it's a very nice line that's I on there. I just want to draw your attention to this little stamp here that's kind of coming off. It's MC. That was like the beginning of calling it Marvel Comics in right. this new wave. It was just this MC and you know, they expand on that Before as they as get it goes the, on. the corner box. Yeah. Mark Evanier, who also contributes essays to the uh the Maximum Fantastic Four oh, yeah, issue. Man. So there's a lot of there, there's some crossover with this back matter as well. You you manifest Mark Evanier if you uh, do something <laughs> about Kirby. He's he, he he's he's coming out. The original outline, right? This is a pretty famous piece. The quote unquote original outline. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Fair, yeah. S- speak on that, Tom. So yeah, I mean this outline is sort of like disputed. It was like found like later on in the offices, uh, uh, you know, of, of Marvel and pointed out to Stan like, hey, look, you did you did do this. Um, it, it's it's in dispute whether it's genuine or not. There's there's a, a lot of um, you know, and we should say it was found and surfaced in like sixty in the sixties, yeah. So it's not like this comes up right. after there were yeah disputes over creation. Yeah. Like it's pretty early that it shows up. I forget. I think like Roy Thomas or yeah. somebody found it. Yeah, yeah. I, for, I forget what I was. Uh, watching but they but it was uh they were clearing out like stan's old desk and there were like two things that were found and and this is like one of the things that was in the Uh desk and you know some some other piece of ephemera but so this is like a a, you know like like an outline and stuff and it's like was this written before like was this stanley by himself sitting at his typewriter and handing this to jack kirby with jack kirby having no prior knowledge of fantastic four prior to that or is this after Jack and Stan kind of hashed things out in person and then Stan wanted to kind of collate their thoughts together and add some new stuff or whatever here. Like, what is... But Stan presented this as though it it were the, the first thing, as if he sat down, typed this whole thing out, handed it to a clueless Jack Kirby and said, Jack, this is what we're doing next. You know, let me tell you this about This is it. an insurance policy for Stan Lee. <laughs> like, like he, 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 he heard Kirby talking about, the, like, rumbling about who created what, and he's like, you know what, I'm going to put this in my back pocket. There's some uh, there, there's good context for this too in here, and I think again it's Tom Brevert talking about it. And the idea is possibly that they met, they come up with the story, and then Stanley types this up to give to Martin Goodman. It's like this is the new thing we're doing. Yeah, um, and um, like like one of the things in its favor as just being like gen- generally authentic, aside from the issue of like when it came in, but that um, it doesn't line up perfectly with the finished product. You know, if it were after the fact. It, it would be more likely that somebody would try to make it line up more, you know, Listen, unless you're real good at covering your tracks. You know what it is, man? It's it's a little kid that that steals the 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 key test in in class, man. But you can't get a hundred percent, so you gotta you gotta cave an answer or two. So that that's why it's controversial, you yeah, know, for for those reasons. And uh, this is the actual scan of the entire or or photos of the entire book. So yeah, if you have any complaints about the book up until this point, it's like. Well, here's the here's here's a, a, a pretty faithful copy of Fantastic Four number one for your troubles. Look at that man! It's published by Can-Am Publisher Sales Corporation. <laughs> pretty cool. It's just like to me, it's it's hard to imagine reading this comic this way again, like after you know, like ever again, and not like if I feel like experiencing the story, reading the big the big. Scene. This is a different paper than the yeah. rest of the book is, mm-hmm. is published. Yeah, you know, it's a more uh, wood-free, pulp, pulpy paper. I think this is a really nice choice to yeah, put in a book I like agree. this. Um, why not? You're yeah. already at you know 250 pages. Like, Best of like, all worlds. Put another 30 pages in the back and reprint this. It, it, it exactly. It's uh, it makes it very complete. Like I don't know yeah. what complaint you could have after right, this. Right. Exactly. But man, what a package! Like what a great book. And it's yeah. it's you don't get there without Walter Mosley's idea yes. and first iteration of this. And I think that you know we all looked at that first book and went. Why is it colored this way? <laughs> right, you know, um, that also wasn't, uh, you know, wasn't one person's genius. I feel like that was the response, and they fixed it. Credit to everybody involved, in, in my opinion. So here's the next thing that needs to happen. You, you got the big Ditko Spider-Man that Marvel's putting mm-hmm. out, and I think there's a Steranko, uh, one of those things, eleven by seventeen, or like twice up the size of the original artwork, trying to capitalize off that artist edition format, right? 
So let's get the comics Abrams <laughs> yeah. fucking <laughs> version of that, of those Stan Lee. Uh, like, Tashin, right, is right. doing, like, the superior uh, Spider-Man reprint books yeah. and stuff. Like, uh, let's get let's get that big version because yeah. it's the same complaint. It's just blown up scans mm -hmm. with that shitty color that uh, we all abhor, except for the people at the Marvel offices signing the checks, sure. making the deals, and and uh, hitting the print button. I mean, I think I think there are some people in like we that are bothered by muss and fuss. Yeah, for they sure. want a pristine thing. So forty bucks. This book came out yep. last year, two thousand five fifty. Mm -hmm. uh, probably one of the few examples of like the the price not going up on I, one of these I, books. I, I think they kind of knew they could move a lot of these. Just kind of you know, Marvel means a different thing now than it used to. Here's some kayfabe trivia. This cover unfolds to be like a giant uh, Fantastic Four number one cover. Sick. This is what I scanned for my um, Fantastic Four Grand cool. Design cover yeah. logo. Was from this mm -hmm. genius. Genius. Super fun to look at both of these things. Uh, such an oddity that the book exists times two. Yeah. Yeah, it's the it's almost the weirdest book ever by itself. But to have two of them, like, again, more proof that we are living in the Matrix. Like, yeah. this doesn't actually exist in real life. How could it? So, I mean, some things are worth doing again and again and again. I'm excited by it. Um, you know, I, I love them both. I think they're a really cool project, a new way to read comics, to see mm -hmm. comics. I dig it. Now Marvel's going to make every panel an NFT. Ooh, let's get out of here. You guys good to go? Yeah. All right, K favors like, follow, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Hit the bell. We'll notify you when new vids are available. Jimmy, what's out there? Hulk Grand Design Monster and Hulk Grand Design Madness. Kind of my version of uh, taking this old classic comics and uh, making it a little bit new for, for new audiences or longtime fans. I write, draw, letter, color, all of that. So pick that up at your local comic book shops while supplies last. And join me on Patreon.com slash JimRug to see more of my comics art. Red Room Trigger Warnings, Issue 1, 2, and 3 on the stands as we speak. Murder on the Dark Web for Fun and Profit is the name of the game in Red Room Comics. Every single issue completely self-contained. So if you see an issue of Red Room out in the wild, scoop it up, give it a sample. If you dig it, grab another because you're getting a complete story every time. Banned in 26 countries. Banned in 10 comic shops. But you can get your hands on these comics uh, yourself if you hit up my link tree in the description below this video, it'll take you to the Fantagraphics website where you can order and pre-order uh, future Red Room comics or hit up my Patreon, patreon.com slash edpiscor. Three bucks get you the archive there and you can uh, read my comics digitally. Uh, more than 200 pages up there as we speak. New strips every Tuesday. Uh, price three bucks for that, man. Tom, what do you have? Hey, Chip Kid himself praised my work on Fantastic Four Grand Design, so go check that out. Uh, check out the, the making of this thing in... Jack Kirby, The Epic Life of the King of Comics. Read American Barbarian. Uh, go to my Patreon and check out my YouTube channel, Total Recall Show. Jim, what else is out there? Subscribe to the Cartoonist Kayfabe e-newsletter at the links below this video. You can also find Cartoonist Kayfabe t-shirts and merchandise at the links below this video. It's a great way to support the Cartoonist Kayfabe channel. Given those marching orders, we'll be on our way. Read more comics. True believers.